In this lecture, we will talk about analysis of algorithms. And the main topic of discussion is the time and space complexity. The concepts of data structures and algorithms are central to computing. We need an analysis tool to measure the goodness of a data structure operations and algorithms. In real world scenarios, we have a clock so that we can measure the amount of time taken to complete a task or to complete some work. In the same way, we can use a scale to measure the distance or we can have a speedometer to measure how fast a car is moving as well as we can have a blood pressure monitor to measure the blood pressure. In computer science, to measure an algorithm or operations, we need time and space complexity. Time complexity is an amount of time it takes to run an algorithm. In the same way, the space complexity is the amount of memory used by the algorithm. There may be several ways of computing a task or implementing a solution for a problem. For example, searching and sorting. There are various algorithms for searching and sorting. Each algorithm will take its own time to compute. Let us take a scenario of two cars. As compared to the two algorithms we have for solving a problem. Now assume that in both the cars we have two people sitting. If both the cars travel from origin to the destination, one car may take less time to reach than the other. In the same way, one search algorithm may take less time to compute than the other search algorithm. Now let us take another scenario where we discuss the running time of algorithm or data structures operations increases with the input size. Now let us take same car and assume that in one car there are two people and in another car there are five people. These two cars are synonymous to the same algorithm but with different inputs. Now when these two cars move from the origin and travel towards the destination, car with the less number of people may reach the destination much earlier or in less time than the other car with size of the input has increased. Therefore the algorithms are categorized according to the function of the input size. Now we have two ways of analyzing the algorithms through time complexity that is one is the experimental analysis and the other one is the theoretical analysis. Now let us try to talk about experiment analysis. In experimental analysis, the running time of an algorithm may can be measured by executing it on various inputs and thereby recording the time spent on each execution. Python and several other programming languages provide a time function. Lapse time from this time function can be computed by recording the start and the end of the algorithm. There are several disadvantages with experimental analysis. The experiment should be performed in the same hardware and software environments. That is, we need to use the same hardware and software to compute the time for different algorithm. Then the experiments can be done only on limited inputs. We will now discuss about theoretical analysis. The analysis is performed directly on description of the algorithm or actual program or function or operation. The advantage of theoretical approach is that it is independent of hardware and software environments and also takes into account all the possible inputs. Now let us take an example of an array. This array has five elements represented by the indexes which is starting from zero. Now assume that we are performing the search operation and the key for the search is 47. We start from the beginning of the array and check whether 47 is present in the 0th index of the array. If it's not present, we move on to the second index till we reach the end of the array. This is the same way the linear search works which we have seen in the previous section. The array might have n number of elements. So the searching will continue till n minus 1 as well as till the nth element. Therefore, the algorithm needs to perform the comparison of the key with each element in the array. That is, there are n number of comparisons that needs to be performed. As well as, we need to traverse the array n number of times. Therefore, the complexity will be order of n. Now, let us try to see the algorithm. In the algorithm, execution of primitive operations is taken as constant. That is, we assume that a constant time is taken for any primitive operation that is assignment, performing any arithmetic operations, comparison statements, accessing elements, calling functions as well as returning functions. Let us try to examine the mathematical function. 
Let us take the first statement of the Python function. This statement is an assignment statement. Therefore, we say that it takes a constant time. The second statement also takes a constant time to compute as well as the third statement. Now, the statement with the for loop will compute or run for n number of times and the if statement that is the comparison followed by the for loop will by itself take constant time but since it's within the for loop it has to execute n number of times. In the same way the return flag else and incrementing the position will all take n number of time to compute. And finally we have returning the flag. Therefore when we compute the mathematical function f of n we have six statements running n number of times and four statements taking a constant time for execution. Therefore, this function is of order n since the polynomial contains a degree 1 and we say that this algorithm will take at most O of n time for execution. Let us consider another example. Now here we have an array A which consists of five elements. And our solution is to compute the partial sum of elements at each index. We have an algorithm known as partial sum and this algorithm will take the starting index in one for loop that is i which is represented here in green arrow and another for loop j which is represented with the red arrow. For the first iteration the array s will contain the first element. Then the ith for loop will move to the second element in the s array and we will compute the sum of 0th and first index of 8th array which is 25. We move on to the third element and then compute the sum of three elements in array a. This will continue with the fourth element where sum of four elements are stored in array s and finally the sum of all the five elements is stored in the last index of S array. Let us try to analyze. If you observe to compute the partial sum at every element, we need to traverse the array again and again from the beginning till the nth element. Therefore, the time complexity of this algorithm is O of n square. Now let us try to see the time complexity through the algorithm. The first statement will take constant time since it's an assignment statement. The second statement will also take a constant time. The third statement that is for loop will run n number of times. The fourth statement which is sum equal to zero will by itself take a unit time or a constant time. But since it's a part of the for loop it will execute for n number of times. Nested for loop itself will run n times. But since it is within the ith for loop, therefore it will take n into n or n square time for computation. The same way we have an assign sum statement as well as assigning the sum to the other array. Now let us compute the mathematical function f of n. Now if you observe, there are two statements which takes in n square times plus there are three statements which takes in n times to compute and three statements will take a constant time for computation. The highest degree of this function is n square. Therefore, we say that this algorithm will take O of n square or will take order of n square for computation. Let us try to see the third scenario. Now here we have three arrays, each of which contains some elements. And our solution for the problem is to find if the sets are disjoint. Now we have this algorithm. If you observe, the first for loop will run for n number of times. The second for loop that is for j will run for n square times and the third for loop which is nested within the ith for loop and the jth for loop will run for n cube times. And we have a comparison statement that is if i equal to j equal to k. This also will run for n cube times. And finally we have a return statement as well as end of return statement for the function. Now if we see the mathematical function f of n. For this algorithm, we will see that there are three statements which takes in n cube times to compute. There is one statement which takes in n square time to compute as well as there is one statement which takes in n times to compute and finally we have a statement which takes constant time to compute. If we see this polynomial, the highest degree is n cube. Therefore, we say that this algorithm disjoint 
will take O of n cube times to compute or to run. Or the time complexity of this algorithm is O of n cube. Now let us take another scenario where we have an array and if you observe this array is in sorted order. I will try to perform the binary search which we have already seen in the previous section. This is the algorithm for binary search. This binary search algorithm will start from the mid of the array and search towards the left side where all the elements are smaller than the mid element and right side where all the elements are larger than the mid element. Now for the first instance, it will check the mid element. Assume that we are searching for the key 4. The comparison with the mid element of the array is made with the key. If the key is less, it will search only the lower half of the array and discard the upper half of the array. So the while loop will now search for the lower half of the array. And at each iteration, the loop will discard half. Therefore we say that the while loop will take log n times to compute. And if we compute the mathematical function, we say that this algorithm will take O of log n times to compute. And the complexity of this algorithm is O of log n. Let us summarize the time complexities which we have seen earlier. First one is the constant which we say it takes one unit of time. Next we have seen is the logarithm that is O of log n. Third one is the linear which is O of n. Then we have also seen quadratic which is O of n square and cubic that is O of n cube. We also have time complexity as n log n which we say as O of n log n. And finally, exponential, which we say that O of 2 power n. These complexities are arranged in ascending order according to the time they take. That is, constant takes less time than log n, and log n takes less time than n. O of n will take less time than O of n log n, as well as n square, that is quadratic, O of n cube, and exponential. Algorithms having exponential time complexity takes worse time to compute. We have a chart to summarize. In this chart, you can clearly observe the time complexities taken for various number of inputs, that is n, on x-axis and f of n function on the y-axis.